Hello and welcome to Tap That MTG, the show where we tell you everything about magic that's probably wrong, but fun to talk about. Super fun. I'm Shauna. I'm Leslie. Today we are doing, for the next few videos, we're going to be doing Brawl Deck Deep Dives into all the one of Brawl decks that are coming out from the mm -hmm. new set. What's Brawl? Brawl is a fun form of commander, kind of, that is standard only. So there is a commander card, similar to regular commander. There's 60 cards, and it has to be standard, the current standard. So makes it a little bit limited in what cards mm -hmm. you can play. But Wizards is trying to get people yeah. into Brawl, and so they're releasing a bunch of Brawl decks yeah. that are pre-made that you can use, and so we're going to be breaking those down. Um, how much life do we start with with Brawl? Oh, with Brawl we start with 25, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a little bit more than your regular, but not as much as Commander, yeah. for sure. So the other thing that's nice about Brawl is, so typically Commander has 100 cards, all single mm -hmm. so you can't yes, have doubles still same rule applies same rules apply yeah. as as commander um but with 60 cards and only 25 life it makes it a little bit more viable to play two player normally with commander you have mm. it's way better to do multiplayer you can play one versus one but your decks don't do what they're supposed to do because it's supposed to be a longer game with commander these ones are going to be a little bit faster which mm -hmm. some of the decks are designed to be really fast decks because yep. they're 60 cards and they're aggressive so you can definitely play 1v1 brawl yep. definitely yeah so the first video we're gonna do is called wild bounty and i will let leslie explain what this one is about wild bounty mm -hmm. is one of my favorite decks mm -hmm. um in the out of the ones that are coming out so what basically wild bounty has Chulain Teller of Tales as the <laughs> commander. Um, he'll nicely sit in the uh, command zone until we cast him. And same rules apply. When he dies, I can put him back in the command zone, leave him in the graveyard, um, whatever I choose in that sense. But most of the time in this deck, you're just going to put him back in the command zone. Mm -hmm. um, so he is two and a green and a white and a blue um, so those are the three colors that i can use for spells in this deck he has vigilance he's a two four and whenever you cast a creature spell draw a card then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield hmm. um, then you can pay three to return a target creature you control to its owner's hand mm -hmm. so this deck is all about lots of land on the battlefield <laughs> so that you can play your creatures and have enter the battlefield effects happen I think of it as, because there's still a lot of big, beefy green creatures, so I like to think of it as an introduction to control for green <laughs> stompy lovers. So it has, you know, a little bit of blue and a little bit of white in there just to kind of give you that kind of intro feeling to of feeling of control. <laughs> and because you're doing a lot more, like normally a green stompy deck or a creature deck is just about put them on the battlefield and swing. Um, but this one, you have to think a little bit more. And so it's, commander, yeah. it, it brings the green stompy people or those people that are just new into another level of magic, but still in a relatively easy to play deck. So fun, fun. Yeah. So why don't we so break, break gonna, it down? Yeah, for we're going to break down on all these videos. We're going to break down similar to what we did with the other commander decks. We're going to break down um, mana curve, what it looks like, what the color, very um, color... Combinations. Combinations are um, as, you know, the numbers of each one. So mm -hmm. the mana curve for Wild Bounty is, there's 25 lands in here, so there's a lot of lands. And it's got uh, two one-cost one cost cards, 14 two-cost, three seven-cost, and nine that are four and up. Seven three-cost. Seven three-cost. Whoops. <laughs> It's okay. That. She read both numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a nice mana curve on that. A um, little bit on the heavier side because, like we were saying, this is a stompy deck. So stompy yeah. decks tend to have big costs. Yeah, features. there's some six mana cost ones in there, but most of them are like the four to five. So still fast. Or the choice because there's some X cost mm. ones in there, which right. we'll get to. Yeah. So then when we break down our color combinations in this deck, you can see that we have ten multicolor four blue, three that are white, um, and then 13 that are green. Uh, col colorless cards, we have four. 
ultimately this is still a very heavily green deck with mm -hmm. multicolor multicolor and green um not very many just straight out blue or straight out white cards so and then as as well for card types we'll break that down for you too so We've got uh, 25 lands, like I said earlier. So one enchantment, three instants, four artifacts, three sorceries, two adventures, and we'll talk about those when we come up to them. They're from the new set, and 24 creature cards. So again, that creature-heavy, stompy style deck. Still a, definitely a creature-heavy deck. Yeah. So what we like to do, um, the same rules apply with a brawl deck as would apply for a commander deck. There's certain things that you need to have in your deck mm -hmm. in order to make it run. In fact, in, in most deck making. So we have card draw, we have removal. Um, in this case, we've added a few categories of control and green stompy. We have a little section on other cool cards. Mana fixing is super important. Yep. In Not deck. Mm -hmm. as important in a 60 card deck as in a 100 card deck but still really important and then of course our land and at the very end if you stick with us long <laughs> enough we have some tips for you on how to maybe tweak <laughs> this deck what you might want to add to it to make it run even better so we're going to start with card draw mm -hmm. so the first one is actually also a creature that i really like actually mm -hmm. i play him a lot is a uh, spectral sailor for one blue he's a little one one and he has flash, so you can play him on the opponent's turn, and you can pay four at any time and draw a card. Mm -hmm. So, well, it's three and one blue to draw a card. Mm -hmm. So I consider him card draw, as well as a little flyer that gets in there for a little bit of damage. Yeah, kind of really he's on the battlefield for, yeah. for card draw. Yeah. And then the card that everybody Ooh. loves to hate is Risen Reef. <laughs> it's one, a green, and a blue for a little one-one. But the nice thing about him is when he enters the battlefield, you get to look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you put it onto the battlefield tapped. If it's not, you put it in your hand. It doesn't matter what else it is. So mm -hmm. you, you automatically get to draw a card when you place it on the battlefield. Now this one has some particular synergies with elementals that won't trigger as much yeah. in this deck but at the very least you put it out and you get that card drop or a land which is yeah, wonderful really for land, ramp right? as well as yeah. so you know there's a few other elementals in here that will maybe trigger if you happen to have them on the battlefield at the yeah. same time too so and our first new card that we want to show you is called Fairy Formation. Fairies! fairies yes. I love fairies so much! <laughs> For four and a blue. This is surprisingly, when I played this deck on uh, Arena, this card actually mm -hmm. was pretty powerful. Yeah. So for four and a blue, like I said, it's a creature fairy. It's a 5-4 flying. And you can pay three and a blue and create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying plus draw a card. Mm -hmm. So he is hard to get rid of. He mm -hmm. definitely the next, or she definitely the next turn. You've got card draw and more fairies. It's just just keep making fairies. It's and a really cards. good card. Yeah, I was surprised. I am so excited about fairies. And the other thing I'm really excited about is cats. Um, <laughs> Keeper of Fables is a beautiful, beautiful oh. cat card. Three and two green, so it does cost five. It's on the higher end of our mana curve. But when one or more non-human creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Pretty much everything in this deck <laughs> is non-creature or non-human. Non -human. Um, I think we threw in a few humans as suggestions, but you'll see as we go. This like You'll be like, oh, himself. yet another non-human. This cat by himself, a four or five. Um, but yeah, those flyers, those fairy yeah. flyers. Just every time they do damage it. and it's... Um, what a is, card for each one of them. Yeah, you deal, yeah, every time you deal combat damage to a player with a non-human creature, you draw a card. Yeah. So there's potentially lots Extra of cards. cards. Yes. Don't I use mill that a lot yourself. In my merfolk deck with that other guy that does that. So in yeah. merfolk, so it, it's useful for sure. Careful not to mill yourself. Yeah, which I've almost done with this deck. <laughs> I almost did that one. Okay, growth spiral. Here's another card draw that's been around for a little bit from Ravnica. It's a green and a blue. Multicolored card, an instant, draw a card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So make sure you play this on their turn so that you don't have to potentially discard cards, which yes. has happened if you yes, use exactly. that instant speed. So the next one is a uh, card that has uh, two on it. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, can you turn it sideways? We have Incubation uh, in you can't. Okay, I will try and tilt my head so I can read it. Incro oh my god. 
incongruity. Um, there's a sorcery here and an instant here, and this is one that you are going to choose which one you cast it for. That's good. That's better. Um, <laughs> so you can look at the top four cards of your library, and you may reveal a creature card from among them and put it on, into your hand, um, put the rest on the bottom of your library. So it's a good way to just kind of draw some cards and look for a creature. Or you can cast the instant, which says exile tar target creature. That creature's controller uh, creates a 3-3 green frog. So yeah, you give them a, a frog lizard creature token that's a 3-3, but maybe they have a 12-12 and you'd mm -hmm. rather have them have a 3-3. So sometimes it's a good little removal too. So this one's great for card draw and removal. Good card. Yeah. Tome of Legends. I really like this one because it's a book. <laughs> <laughs> it's an artifact. We have a lot two. of biases, fairies, cats, do. books. Yeah. No wonder I like yeah. this deck. I know, right? And he's the teller of tales. He's I mean, seriously. Tales. It's telling stories. So this Sorry. one enters the battlefield with a page counter on it. So whenever your commander enters the battlefield or attacks, put a page counter on Tome of Legends. So pay one and tap it, and you can remove a page counter from Tome of Legends and draw a card. So it's just sitting there ready for you to use for that card draw. I love that it. there's a benefit to your commander accidentally getting eaten by another creature or something. Yeah. And come in and out. He can come in and out. Obviously, attacks there too, is a tax, is. so you don't want to um, let your commander die that much. So yes, exactly. When he attacks, it's great. So then we've moved we move on to our removal section. Um, and the first one in our removal <laughs> section is Crawl Harpooner. Been around for a little bit now. It's one and a green. It's an insect warrior with reach. It's a three-two, but he has undergrowth. And so what undergrowth does, it's it's mm -hmm. a an ability that Ultimately, you're counting the cards that are in your graveyard. You only have to do that once. They've made that ability so that you don't have to constantly keep track of what's in your graveyard. So in this case, when it enters the battlefield, you can choose up to one target creature with flying that you don't control, and it gets plus X plus zero until the end of turn where X is the number of creatures in your graveyard. Then you may have this fight that creature. Yep. It's a may have it fight, so you don't have to if you don't want to lose your harpooner. I love that versatility. Um, it's how many creatures are in your graveyard, so please make sure that you actually have some creatures in your graveyard if you're wanting them to fight um, and kill something. So, yeah, just you have to think about it. And sometimes he's just good to come in as a 3-2. Mm -hmm. I mean, and for two, for two yeah. a 3-2 is great. Yeah. It's above curve, so... Yeah. Uh, Meteor Golem. So people wonder why this card gets put into so many decks. Um, but for, because he's seven, he's a seven cost, a three, three. But when he enters the battlefield, destroy target non land permanent and opponent controls. So he's removal and a creature, a fairly big creature. So you're kind of getting two cards for one. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing with this deck how many times you can play that over and over again and destroy things. Mm -hmm. Because you have so much mana at your disposal with this deck. He, you put him back in your hand with your commander and you bring him out again next turn and you're destroying something else. Yeah. So it's it's very useful. Yeah. So I found. whenever, when we, because we're talking about, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Remember, we talked to the at the beginning about how your commander takes advantage of putting something back into your hand mm -hmm. so that you can then play it again. So think about the enter the battlefield effects. Yep. The, car, the crawl yeah, harpooner, yep. you can have it fight something um, and put it back in your hand and then have it fight something again. Same with meteor golem. You can just keep bringing things back and forth. So pay attention to the enter the battlefield effects here for sure. Um, another removal, two, uh, two white and a blue for a sorcery to return creature you control to its owner's hand then destroy all creatures takes advantage of maybe entering the battlefield you could return your commander to your hand because that's mm -hmm. a viable option mm -hmm. and then destroy all creatures um this is when they go wide if you're playing knights you need this um, because <laughs> if those knights are yep. super wide which we'll get to in another video but <laughs> we won't talk about them right now but nice little board wipe it's good to have one on the back burner you don't want to kill all of your creatures necessarily but sometimes it's possible and yeah this card runaway together is a new card that's coming out and it's so cute as you can see it's mm -hmm. this 
strange little monster guy running away with it. Leave it to a kid to be like, yeah, I'll be your friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so for one and a, a blue, it's an instant. So choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hands. So you're getting rid of one of their big tokens or even their commander or whatever. And you're putting something back in your hand. So it's just a, a fun way to remove something from the battlefield and take advantage of your end of the battlefield. Another reminder for the new players out there that anything that has to have targets when you play it, mm. you have to have targets in order to play it. So yes. choose two target creatures controlled by different players. If there is not two creatures out on the battlefield, you Good can't point. play this card. Yeah. So you have to have those. Um, you can't just decide not to choose one. Also, um, if you're playing just one versus one, different players means you as well yeah. so uh it doesn't say target opponents two different target opponents so um yeah but with this deck that's a good thing be you. cognizant of that yeah put something back that yeah. you can use it to enter the battlefield effect yeah uh prison realm so it is an enchantment for more of the spark for two and a white it is when it enters the battlefield exile target creature planeswalker and opponent controls and you also get to scrap which is really handy. It's a great little removal. Yeah. All right, moving into my favorite <laughs> section, Green Stompy. Yes. I love my Green Stompies. Yes. So we call this Green Stompy, well, because it's all Green Stompy stuff. So these are the high mana cost things that are in green or just not necessarily green, but just very Stompy. So we have End Raise Forerunner. It's not a no, it's not a new card. It's a came out a couple sets ago. But it's five and three <laughs> green, so it's gonna be hard to play unless you have the right mm -hmm. the right mana base. Mm -hmm. But it should be because it is a seven seven. It has vigilance. <laughs> it has trample. It has haste. <laughs> and then when end raise forerunner enters the battlefield, so another enter the battlefield effect. Other creatures you control get plus two plus two and gain vigilance and trample until the end of turn. Then you return it back to your hand with your commander and do it all over again. <laughs> Next turn, and they're dead. It's great. It's, it's amazing how often that card goes yeah. off. I love awesome. that card. This one is Steel Bane, Steel Bane Hydra. It's from the new set. It is for X and two green. So you pick what you want X to be. Steel Bane Hydra, Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. You can pay two and a green and remove one of those counters from it and destroy a target artifact or enchantment. So useful. Mm-hmm. This deck, you, you, number one, you're going to have a big creature, and number two, you're going to have some removal. Mm -hmm. Simple. Yeah, and it's getting smaller and smaller, but that's okay because you're removing some very important stuff. And then that, you put it back in your hand when yeah. it's little. And then enter it bring again. Bring it out again. So fun. Good point. Thorn Mammoth, another wonderful big green stompy. you stompie. play this card, you win the game. They play this card, you win the game. So five and two green, so cost seven. Especially good For a six, nice. six. It's a trample. But this one, whenever Thorn Mammoth or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature that you don't control. Constant removal every single time you play a creature, you get to have it fight if you choose. Um, so if you if mm -hmm. you find that it's had too many fights and it needs to just wait until it's the next rest. turn, that's totally fine, which is better than some of the other stuff that's come out recently that has just been like had to constantly mm -hmm. fight. But uh, yeah, 6-6 six, six, with all the enter the battlefield things that are happening here, plus <laughs> your commander uh, allowing yeah. you to just bring things back. And, oh, Pretty much, just, yeah. When you get them out, you win. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, if you get this guy out, Beanstalk Giant from the new set. So this is an adventure card. Yay, so adventure we're cards. we're going to explain these a little yes. bit. So this is for six and a green. So this card get get can get played to three different ways, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Because you can play... Okay, so how can I explain this? So first thing you, you can play is if you play first the sorcery... First is a choice. Yeah. So if you play the sorcery first. So there's a sorcery on there for two and a green... You search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So when you play that sorcery or instant, whatever, it depends on the adventure cards, you can put them into exile, that card, and then you can play the creature side of it. 
if you start with just the creature side of it, you don't get to play the sorcery piece. So yeah. I guess there's two ways you can play this card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it's in your hand, basically, you have the choice. Mm -hmm. You should always go on adventures because yes. to be a true adventurer, <laughs> you need to go on adventures. So we strongly encourage you to adventure with these adventure cards. They're really kind of neat. Yeah. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to get some more land out there. Then you're going to play it for six and a green, and you're going to have this Beanstalk Giant's power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. Yeah. In this deck, you're going to have a huge giant. Yeah. It's awesome. There's really no reason not to play this for its adventure. Oh, yeah. Even if you want that creature, like one extra turn, if you, had, be if you have seven mana, that's fine. You can play it, sure. But why not just wait an extra turn? Play the three, get an, another extra mm -hmm. land, and then... He's that much bigger. He's that much bigger, yeah. Just, just do it. They know it's coming. They're just going to quit. Just do it. <laughs> I'm going to move on to another section because we have another one. This is kind of like the stuff that makes it control Enjoy. for beginners. <laughs> so we have a uh, foreboding spirit, which is one and two white. Foreboding spirit enters the battlefield and until your next turn. Um, sorry. When foreboding spirit enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control unless their controller pays two for each of those creatures. So you're stomping them dead in the tracks when it enters the battlefield. And hey, you have a totally wicked awesome commander who can put things back yeah. in your hand and you just keep making it so that they can't attack unless they have this little tax of two for each creature <laughs> to pay and they will hate you. Yeah. Because really everyone really hates control convenient. players. I mean, we don't hate control players, but <laughs> this is like a little like once you once you try it, you'll be like, mm, yes, control. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to do more. And the frilled mystic is really going to push you that direction. Yeah, because I love this card. So for it's an elf lizard wizard for two green and two blue. It's a little three two, but it has flash. And when it enters the battlefield, you may count your target spell. It could be a creature, that could be an instance, that could be their, what you call it, commander. Mm -hmm. You can counter it. And they don't even see it coming. Because, yeah, you're playing a creature deck, so why would they worry about why control? Why would they worry about control? You're going to sneak that in there and mm -hmm. use that. Mm -hmm. And we have some other cool cards. So there was no new cards for the controly part, but um, like we said, it's, it's control light. Mm -hmm. But we have Biomancer <laughs> Familiar for a green and a blue. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate, which is great. This effect can, can't can reduce the amount of mana an ability costs to activate less than one mana. So it has to be cost you at least one to cast. And then you can tap it, and then um, the next time a target creature adapts this turn, it adapts as though it had no plus one, plus one counters on mm -hmm. it. So you can adapt over and over again, which we'll explain with the minute. next card. Yeah. There's a couple of adapt cards. One of them is Shark to Crab, which is a really, really fun card. This is a little bit of controly. So for mm -hmm. two and a green and a blue, um, it's a 4-4, four, four, so he's good by himself. Plus he has that adapt thing for, again, that two and a green and a blue. You can adapt him for one, and that is the ability to put a plus one counter on this guy. And when you put a plus one counter on a Shark to Crab, you, whenever you put one or more, um, you can tap target creature and opponent controls, and that creature doesn't untap during that controller's next unstab. So those two cards together, mm -hmm. you can adapt more than once, whereas normally you can't do that. Once you've got counters on it, you can't do that. But with the familiar that Leslie was talking about, you can do it more than once with this guy. Because this one says, if the, tar if the creature has no 1-1 one -one counters on it. Now, that is also important to remember. If you've put a 1-1 one -one counter on an adapt creature, even if it's not because you adapted that creature, yeah. if it has a 1-1 one, one counter on it, it still counts as not being able to adapt yeah. it. So just be careful when you're putting counters on things if you're playing other decks with adapt. Fairy Vandals. Oh, this is a nice one of the new cards. Another fairy. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Mm -hmm. I just want a, I just want a bunch of fairies. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, he is a 1-2 with flying and flash. And when you um, draw your second card each turn, Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Fairy Vandal. So mm -hmm. really wants you to take advantage of card draw um, with this. And if you do, then he just keeps getting bigger and yep. bigger. And he's a flyer. And he's a two toughness flyer, which is a little mm -hmm. harder to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Speaking of flyers, this is a crazy Perhelion 2. So I had not played with this card until I played with this deck. on. No the one really does. Nobody does. <laughs> 
but because it's six and two white, it's a five five artifact vehicle. So vehicles have to be crewed. So that means you have to tap other creatures to crew the vehicle. So this one is a flying first strike vigilance five five. Whenever it attacks, create two four four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking. So you're getting a lot of power when this thing's, thing attacks. But it's a crew of four. But if you get it out once, you can use one of those angels if you want to mm -hmm. crew it. So to crew a vehicle, you have to tap other creatures that amount to a four power, four or more, to crew it. And you have to tap them to do that. So it's a little bit tricky to do. You can do that both on attack or on defense. So think about that when you're using it. Mm -hmm. It's a little more advanced kind of playing, but it's fun. And if it's crew two, then it's two power that you need. And yeah. you can use more than one creature to create yes. that. You don't have to use yeah. one creature. So, And then we have our next section. I just keep introducing all the sections. <laughs> you do. The next section is mana fixing, which is one of the most important things in building a deck. So there are some cards that we have in here that are good for mana ramp or mana fixing. fixing. Incubation Druid is one that is really good. It is a great card all around. So just buying this deck has some really mm -hmm. value cards in yeah. it um so it's just a zero two but you can tap it to add one mana of any uh type of land that you control that it could be produced so it's really not any color green. not yeah. just green and if incubation druid has a one one counter on it add three mana of that type instead one type but still three mana and it has adapt which, if you have Biomancer Familiar out, you can adapt as many times as you want. It is an expensive adapt, which it should be, because you adapt for three and add three 1-1 one, one counters on it. So that doesn't mean that because you have three counters, it's three times three. No, it's no, still just three it's mana, two. but any, any counter that's on it. Mm -hmm. You could put a counter on it for a different reason, that's fine too. Yeah, great yeah. mana fixing. Yeah. Uh, district Guide for two and a green. It's a 2-2, two -two, and it's a little guy that when he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card or gate card and reveal it, put it in your hand, and shuffle your library. So it's just going and digging for mana. Yeah. Well, and there are good. gates in this deck, so yeah. search for your gate if you have the opportunity. Yeah. Two mana cost. Uh, Silhana Wayfinder, two uh, mana cost for a 2-1, one, a 1 and a green. Um, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a creature, land card from among them, and put um, that on top of your library. So it doesn't go in your hand, it goes on the top of the library, the rest go on the bottom, but then you know what's coming. Um, it's another great enter the battlefield effect, because mm -hmm. you put it in, and then you just keep searching Digging. through your library to see what's there, and, and basically decide what you're going to play next. Mm -hmm. Paradise Druid, 2-1, one, 1 and a green. It's an Elf Druid, and it has Hexproof as long as it's untapped, and it can tap for add one mana of any color. So this is a hugely important card. In this I love this three card. Three-color deck, yeah. This is a card that will be around for many, yeah. many years. Yeah. Good name. Yes. Geyer Engineer for 1, a green, and a blue. Uh, taps for a green and a blue. Two mana. Two mana guy. tapper from a one one. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much all he's. I mean, he's there for. It's just to he's, add two he's mana. awesome. Enough said. <laughs> yeah, you can use him to crew vehicles too. Yeah, but that's true. Leaf can drew it for one and a green. It's one of those elementals that we were talking about earlier, and you can tap him and add a green. Or if you control four more creatures, which can often happen with this deck, he is two green instead. So he's really a great uh, tool to use. And he's an elemental, so he's you know, an elemental. you have Risen Reef out, yep. then you might get some more. So here's our next adventure card. There's actually only two adventure cards in this, so this is our second one. Uh, two and a green. Um, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll do this the sorcery first. So you can choose to do either one of these. The sorcery is add one mana of any color. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're just going to play... Pay one green to make whatever color. It can be any color. You can pay one green to make one green if you really want to, just so you can cast the sorcery. I don't know why you would do that. But this <laughs> would be for, hey, I just don't have that that white that I need. And you want to start and I this really, process really need a white. Yeah. Or maybe you've stolen a red from somebody and yeah. it has an activated ability and you need a red. Yeah. So you might use it for that as well. Start the process. 
get this uh, dru elf druid out on an adventure. And uh, then when you put her, him, it in that know. they the <laughs> in um it add one one mana of any color so it's just constantly it's tapping for any color i love that there's so many like any color this will be great for uh other commander decks mm -hmm. as well for sure but great for brawl here's another fairy for leslie mm -hmm. it's for uh, it's merrileaf pixie and for green and a blue it's a two two flyer and you can tap it for green or blue so pretty handy plus it's a nice body to have out there Flying in the air. Lots and of manifestations. When we this say day. nice body, it's not that we think she's gorgeous. She <laughs> is gorgeous, but we mean like the body of the creature on the back. Yes. <laughs> two, two. Circuitous Route. Um, three and a green for a sorcery. And this one just allows you to search your library for up to two basic land mm -hmm. cards or gate cards and put them two. onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. The, both of them go onto tapped. the battlefield. They come in tapped, um, but you, a lot of the search for, when mm -hmm. you search for two, one goes in your hand and one goes yeah. on the battlefield tapped. This isn't the case. You just get to yeah. put them out. It's great, especially if you find gates, because gates come in tapped anyway, but yeah. then you just put them in tapped. Exactly. And, yeah. Um, the Flower and Flourish card is an underrated card, I think. It's from Ravnica. Yeah, you play with this I one a lot. with this one a lot. So, Flower side of it is for green or white. It is a mana fixing thing. It lets you search for a forest or plains and reveal it and put it onto your hand. So it is a great way to quickly go and grab that mana that you didn't get in your opening hand. So usually if I have this card in my opening hand, I don't worry about mana too much. Mm -hmm. However, if I get this later on in the game, I like to use the sorcery flourish for a green and a white and the creatures you control get plus two plus two until end of turn. It's just such an awesome way to just get through in that final swing that they're really not expecting and all of a sudden all your creatures are a lot bigger and they're in big trouble. You said for a green and a white and I was like four and a green and a white. Yeah I know you said for a green and a white. Oh. <laughs> and I was like well no it costs uh, six it's not just a green and a white and then I then four, I processes four. what you were what you were saying. I'm like, oh no, she does say it right. She said four, green and a white. Come on. Four four. I, <laughs> I just said it thought you would think that fours. was hilarious. <laughs> uh, Fireman vessel for four. <laughs> Fireman, Firemind Vessel <laughs> enters the battlefield tapped, oh but it, that's okay if it enters the battlefield tap because when you untap it, it adds two mana of different colors. So this is not, you have you have to choose different colors, mm -hmm. but that's okay because a lot of times you can use that <laughs> second color. Three color whatever. deck. It's great. An Arcane Signet, it's new to this set. It's, it might be a reprint, I don't know. But handy dandy little artifact that you can tap add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. So your your commander doesn't have to be out, but you can certainly use this to help you out. Yeah, I love that this command. is in all of them, and I believe that that's going to be in the draft boosters as well. Nice. Um, so I think That'll that really will be help really helpful when people are making commander decks. Commander decks, yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. introducing again. <laughs> introducing another section is Leslie. Um, we have our land base. So as we said, land base is really important when you're creating a deck. You want to have you want to have basic lands that you can search for when you have those cards mm -hmm. that search for basic land. But if you can have dual lands of some kind and and even better if you can have dual lands that come in untapped or have a way to bring them in untapped, then that's great. Um, but that's okay. They are more expensive. And there's some great lands in this. So the first mm -hmm. one we have is actually one of those uh, expensive lands. If you bought it, it's going to cost you between $18 and $20, depending mm -hmm. on what country you're in. But Hallowed Fountain, um, it is also called a Plains Island. So that's another thing, actually, I'll mention. Okay. Um, if you are playing a card that says this comes in untapped if you have a Plains or an Island, and let's say you have a uh, blue, uh, white, mana on or land on the battlefield it has to say plains or island in the type line yeah. so where it says land dash plains island this is actually a plains and an island whereas the next one is not it's just a land it does tap for either or but you can pay to life to bring it in untapped so mm -hmm. life is a resource you have extra yep. um if you don't need to play something right away there's no need to tap 
or pay that to life. You could bluff too. You could bluff too. Like maybe I have, because we're 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 digging into the control stuff now. That's right. <laughs> you might want to bluff. So that's right. So then we have uh, Temple of Mystery, which is one of those scry lands from M20, and it enters the battlefield tapped, but when it enters the battlefield, you get to scry. So it really is helpful for figuring out, okay, what am I going to play next? What's happening? Yep. Love the scry. Here's one of our guild gates, Azoria's guild gate, enters the battlefield, and it taps for a, a white and a blue. Okay, and then we have Celestia Guild Gate, and it same thing. It enters the battlefield tapped, and it is green and white. Celestia mm -hmm. colors. Simic Guild Gate, same thing, green and blue. Yeah. Thornwood Falls. The, now this one is the life gain one. So it enters the battlefield tapped, but when it enters the battlefield, you gain a life. Mm -hmm. So it helps you on that other yeah. end. I think there's another yeah. one. Another, another two. Yeah. Blossoming Sands and Tranquil Cove both gain you a life. They tap for either of those colors. Green and white, or white and blue, for those right. that are listening. Right. <laughs> evolving Wilds is the typical Evolving Wilds. My not favorite. You always get to introduce this one, and why. it's not yeah. boring. This is a great card. You can just search okay. for what you're looking for. Commander. You need it. But then it comes in tap, so you search for what you need, but it comes in tap. Yes, so. but you, you, you're going to tap it on your end stuff. I guess. Then you get okay. a card that you can use. Okay. Anyways, and then Command Tower. Great to see Command yes. Tower in there because, of course, we are in Command Commander uh, type game and uh, add one mana of any color of your commander's identity. Plus, it's always nice to have another copy of this card available to you. Yes, exactly. You um, and that's the other thing to think about when you're making decks, too. You don't have to buy, because you have 18 commander decks, you don't have to buy 18 copies of Command Tower. Mm -hmm. If you have a set of cards that is like Command Tower that is going to be good in 18 Evolving different wilds. decks. Evolving Wilds. <laughs> although you can find Evolving Wilds probably yeah. <laughs> cheap. Um, Feel free to like Arcane Signet that's coming out as well. That's another new one. Mm -hmm. You can, Soul Rings, hard to get a hold of. You can put those in, you can just have them and just switch them from deck to deck based on what you need. So don't yeah. feel you have to buy all of the singles. The rest of our land is mm -hmm. basic land. So we have five planes, four islands, and six forests in this deck. Mm -hmm. So lots of basic lands to help us out mm -hmm. and we need lots of land and land is where a lot of times in the pre-made decks as we've said in other videos but this might be your first one so we're going to say it again mm -hmm. um that you can kind of tweak your deck because they often put more land than you need um i don't remember playing this deck and getting on arena and getting mana flooded so i I don't think that there's a lot of play here mm. as far as land goes, but there is definitely some play here. Um, so if you want to tweak, um, that's where you can start. And you have to keep your deck to 60, so that's actually pretty mm -hmm. pretty good. 60 including mm -hmm. your commander. Um, in commander game, it's 100 including your commander. Um, but yeah, we have some interesting tweaks mm -hmm. that have some enter the battlefield effects yes. and all kinds of things. So. I yeah what's the first one it's one of your faves <laughs> this is a fun fun card this is a control type card for sure it's the agent of treachery from m20 it's for five and two blues so it's not cheap to play but with that whole enter the battlefield thing and being able to put it back into your hand again so listen to this it is a two three but when he enters the battlefield gain control of target permanent so it can be their planeswalker it can be their commander it can be anything you get control of it and you keep control of it. And at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. So again, with that commander being able to put this back in your hand, you just play it over and over again. It is so awesome. Yeah. It's so fun. And you only need three yeah. to win the game. So, right? No, it's drawing three cards. Oh, okay. Drawing three cards. <laughs> right. So. I thought it was the win. You're going to win the game because you're going to take their best stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to keep taking their stuff yeah, over that's and right. over again because you're going to put it back in your hand. Yeah. Treacherous jerk. Another <laughs> great removal card that's also just a great body. Five and a He's green cute. for affectionate Indrake. He's just, he just wants to give everybody a yeah. hug. He doesn't know how strong he is. <laughs> um, when it enters the battlefield, you can have it fight a creature you don't control. So 
four four, get rid of their little yeah. stuff, just keep bringing them back and putting them back in the yeah. battlefield. The other one we were thinking of because of the enter the battlefield trigger is the Avon Eternal, which is for two and a blue. It's a two two flying zombie bird warrior. And he's been very powerful in any draft deck that we've played him in for sure. He's just a good little workhorse, especially if you get to do him more than once. So when it's a two two flyer, when he comes into the battlefield, a mass one. So being able to have that little mana cost over and over again, playing it over and over again, you get that big mass token. It's, yeah. it's really because heavy. he only costs three, right? Mm -hmm. You can play and him twice in a turn. If what, like once you get your commander out, mm -hmm. he costs five. It's very reasonable that the next turn you could play him, tap your commander, put him back in and, and into your hand, and the next turn mm -hmm. play him again, and you just keep amassing over and over again. It's great. We have a charming prince. <laughs> he is very charming looking, I guess. Um, <laughs> for one and a white. Uh, when charming prince enters the battlefield, choose one. You get to either scry two, you get to gain three life, or you get to exile another target creature that you own and return it to the battlefield under control, under your control at uh, the beginning of your next end step. So this is another enter the battlefield type manipulation that mm -hmm. you can use if you put this in um this is in the new set but it interestingly enough was not in this pre-made deck um i guess you can't put all the rares in you guys <laughs> not they're waiting for you to put some of the rares in all by yourself yeah. i guess but yeah. this is a great one for this deck um i would probably yeah. myself use it for the scry or the enter the battlefield but it depends you depends might, might it's also just a two somebody. two for two so yeah if you exile, the thing to note too, that if you exile a card, it's left the battlefield. So again, when you bring it back in, all the enter the battlefield happens again. Mm -hmm. So that might be something that you do with this card too, is exile one of your, exile your Indric thing and have it fight another creature when he comes back in yeah. again. So, yeah. Well, and I remember when I first started playing Magic way back when, in the good old <laughs> days when I was your age. No, I didn't understand. I would I, I would see stuff like that. Like, why, why would, would you I? Do that? Why would I exile something and just bring it back at, on my end step? Mm -hmm. Like, why would I do that? Well, duh, because I've entered the battlefield, but I didn't know that at that time. So, enter the battlefield is crazy sometimes. Speaking of. Civic Stalwart. So this is a Elefante, Elephant Soldier, for three and a white. It's a three, three, and when he enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So he is just nice to have coming in and out mm -hmm. as much as possible. Yeah. And this one, the Cloud Kin Seer, I actually would, I would think this is one of our best suggestions. Mm -hmm. yep. Number one, it's an elemental, so it, help, it has some synergy with Risen Reef. Yep. It gets you some card draw, and there's not... I don't feel enough card draw in this deck. Yes. And because of that, I would say this is something that you should mm -hmm. just automatically find one and put one in. It's yeah. a common, so yeah. it's easy to put easy in. To it's find. a flyer, so that's great as well. Mm -hmm. Two one flyer enters the battlefield. And if you choose, then you can bring it, take it out and put it back in again and get again. constant and card draw. So gotcha. Another one um, for the whole mana ramp thing, Arboreal Grazer. It's a 0-3 for one green, but uh, it has reach, so that's really handy to block those little flyers. Mm -hmm. And when it enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tap. So this one kind of waffling back and forth a little bit on it. It's nice that it has reach, mm -hmm. um, so it can be a blocker for you. And if you don't really need a land card, like late in the game, it's not necessarily great. But yeah. with this deck, you do need a lot of land out, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, well, an idea for you. and I mean, your combo. commander lets you put land out as well, so you may not need this, but he has a nice little enter the yeah. battlefield effect that yeah. will be okay. Uh, God Eternal Ronis, however, <laughs> has an amazing enter the battlefield yes. effect. Effect. So three and two green, legendary creature zombie god, mm -hmm. five, five, death touch. And when he enters the battlefield, you get to double the power of each other creature you control until the end of turn. Those creatures gain vigilance until the end of the turn. And when he dies, you just get to put him into exile from the battlefield. Or sorry, when he dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put him in, into the, your library oh, third from the top him. instead. So he's really hard to kill. He doubles the power of your things. Can you imagine? Just ruminate on that for a second, people. <laughs> 
bringing him back to your hand. Your Razbor doubled. Putting him back in. <laughs> All the green stompies we talked about. Just think. Ruminate. Feel just how good think. that's going to feel and how fun that's going to be. <laughs> <sighs> ah, good. I get to do this one. Wicked Wolf for two and a green. I love this card. Because it's excited. wicked it's or because it's a wolf? Because it's a wolf <laughs> and it's wicked. It's a 3-3. Three, three. When he enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. And you can sacrifice a food, which doesn't really happen too much with this deck, um, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. It gains indestructible until end of turn and tap it. So, yeah, it's just going to be fun to have him fight. Yeah, nice like little wolves. removal. Wolves and their fighting is awesome. Not as good as some of the other enter the battlefield because yes. he's only a three three. But and food. Yeah, but still a decent one. It's a wolf. And then uh, <laughs> we thought Guardian Project would be mm -hmm. good. Three and a green for an enchantment. And whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, you get to draw a card. You are playing a deck that has only one creature of, yep. or one card of each name in your deck. So anything you play is going to be different than any other card. Yes, and you potentially will be doing that more than once because you're putting those cards back into your hand. Yeah, so card draw is like a yes. given with this card. Yes. And it only costs four. Yes. You do have to draw a card. So yes. it can be trouble. can be troublesome if you but have all kinds of card draw By happening. now you're going to have them dead. Because mm -hmm. you've got so much card advantage. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be much more prominent in a lot of commander decks. That that thing. Yeah. It's really awesome. So that is the last of our suggestions for you for the Wild Bounty Brawl deck that's coming out here when the new set, Throne of Eldraine, gets released. So really excited about it. I think Brawl is going to be really fun. And because I've played it a little bit on Arena, I think Leslie has too, right? Yeah. So, it's, had yeah. fun for that week there. It was great. Yeah, it's just a great way to get into a little bit of commander without being too overpowering yeah. for you. Yeah. Anyway, in the meantime, tap, tap those magic, magic cards, cards and have fun doing it. it. See you later, Bye, guys. guys.